Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to another Sabbath day. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those of the diaspora dispersed throughout Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade. My topic today is understanding how the Israelites must walk. Again, understanding how the Israelites must walk. This topic is going to be a little bit complex. It's going to be a little milk and it's going to be a little meat in this in this particular uh, lesson. Um, but it's just some nuances of things that's written. To, to give us instructions on how we must walk and and what the things that we need to think about and, and, and analyze in this Bible. So we're going to start with a, a, a basic precept, Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord. What? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not into thine own understanding. Und explain that to me, please. Trust what the Lord says. What? What? what how did the Most High God speaks through the Bible? Yes. So he's you supposed to trust what He says and and do and, and do what? And not lean to their, your own understanding. Oh man, well you know what happened really was you know it's the man always be getting down on me. You know they always come in the neighborhood and and see, but the Most High God said. It shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the, thou wilt not hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Verse sixteen: Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. You don't have to analyze. Well, what the man said, and what the, no, most like God said, he gonna curse you in the city and curse you in the field. Yeah, and, and when the man come and and, and and clock you upside your head and put you in handcuffs and you bleeding all over the back seat of that that uh, patrol car and take you to jail, that's part of the curse. It, it's no need to analyze anything. Lean not to your own understanding. The Most High speaks to you, your spirit through the scriptures. Everything that the Most High God wants you to do is written. You don't have to guess or wonder. His words are clear to those who are keeping His commandments. Romans 7 and 14. Dominic, read that. Right. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul of your sin. This is why we must worship the Most High God in spirit, in the law. Because the Most High God is is not fleshly. He don't. You can't worship Him fleshly, lusting after everything. You can't worship Him in flesh. He is a spirit. You must worship Him in the law. That's how you. That's that's you know. It ain't no spirit floating around. That's not what He's talking about. The Most High God. You must worship Him in spirit. Let's get that John four twenty four. God is a spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The law is spiritual and the, and the law is true. Psalms 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. So the law is spiritual and the law is the truth. So you got to worship the, the Most High God in the law. And you got to worship him in the law which is the truth. Israelites must worship the Most High God in spirit and in truth which is the law. With that said, one must ask, how do you do that? Romans 15 and 4. Whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. Look, look, slow down and read that over again. For whatsoever things were written for our aforetime were written before time were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. You must understand that the Most High God's Spirit is in the Holy Scriptures. These instructions and examples are written for us to learn and or to do. For example, if you're walking as the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, or Yahweh walked, then what should we Israelite teachers are supposed to learn 
from these precepts. I'm going I'm to I'm pose these at you. Matthew 10 and 5. Let's, let's get there. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. These are the, 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 the students that was walking as Christ walked. Now, as Israelites who are in this truth that are aspiring to walk as Christ walked, you got to listen to these precepts and understand that these apply to you also. Read that again. These twelve Jesus sent forth. Those are the students, the people that's walking as Christ walk. Come on. And commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Don't go into the way of the Gentiles. Come on. And into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not. The, these are the twelve disciples, disciples or followers of Christ. Today, these will be the repentant Israelites who have been born again, have been converted, and have studied the law. And you notice I said study the law. We, we, ain't, we ain't talking about those running around talking about John 3.16 for God so loved the world and they don't understand what John 3.14 said. He told them not to go in areas where the Gentiles are. <coughs> Let me ask you men and Israel's men of Israel a question. When you are on the street teaching are you on the right corner? I mean you know that's, that's simple because you know Christ said don't go in the way of the Gentiles. So when you're on the streets teaching, on you, are you on the corner where Gentiles are roaming to and fro? This proves that the multitudes that the Messiah spoke before were not all were not all nations. Christ did not stay in Jerusalem. I will show you this after making this point. He didn't stay in Jerusalem. But he told his disciples not to go to the Gentiles. So when he left Jerusalem, he wasn't going to Gentiles to speak to them. Other nations, he was going to, like like America, you know, like Dallas. When he go to Dallas, he was going, you know, to Oak Cliff where, where, we, where we live. You know, to, to his people. He wasn't going to North, North Dallas where, where his people weren't. You know, we got a few of them there, but he wasn't going, you know, particularly to North Dallas. He would go. He was going to like Old Cliff, where the majority of us are. Matthew's ten and six. Come on. We we'll go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, don't go to the Gentiles. Go to your people. That's what he's saying. Go to your people. Go to your people only. Go to the hoods, the ghettos, the barrios. I know a lot of camps are in these communities among these people, but a few camps are out in the streets on the wrong corner screaming at so-called white people, Arabs, Chinese, Japanese, and others. This message is not for them. This is not what the Messiah did. He had to, he had to contend with his own people. Continue. Matthew 10 and 7. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This is a very crucial statement right here. As you go preach the kingdom of heaven, let's get the kingdom of heaven. See, because the fact is, these are simple messages that we should learn and understand what the Messiah was saying and, and instructing us to do as well. All right, let's get the kingdom. Because he telling you, don't go to the way of the Gentiles, and this is the reason why. Read that. Revelations 21 and 12. Where you at? Revelations 21 and 12. All right, read. And had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates, and at the gates twelve angels, and names written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. This is the kingdom of heaven. He told him to preach the kingdom of heaven, which is only for the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. These precepts is telling you the message has no value for Gentile nations. Don't go to the Gentiles because the message is not for them. It's only for the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. When you get to the final book and it tells you what the kingdom of heaven is, and the Messiah was telling his disciples to preach the kingdom. Why would you go to people that the, that the, that the kingdom is not even for and preaching it? 
is proof that Christ went to other nations but did not teach all nations. He taught as he, as he instructed his disciples. Let's get Matthew 15 and 21. And Jesus went thanks and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Tyre and Sidon were conquered by the Greeks in 322 BCE by Alexander the Greek. I have a source on, on, on this lesson, so uh, I'll leave it there. Come on, Matthew, come on. Matthew 50, 15 and 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. This was an Edomite woman. Uh, you get that information out of Mark 7 and 26. Through twenty nine, she was she was uh, from uh, from the Greek nation that took over the land after Alexander the Greek conquered it. Why do other nations acknowledge the Messiah as king? But Christ was being tested at every turn by his own in Jerusalem. Let's let's continue on. This woman knew who he who he was, called him son of David. You know, have mercy on me, thou son of David. You know. She, she knew who he was. She was from another nation, but why your own people are the hardest ones to convince who you are? All right, come on. Matthew 15 and 23. But he answered her not a word. He did what? He answered her not a word. He ignored the heck out of this woman. Come on. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Sent her away, for she crieth after us. Because after he after he ignored her, she went and she went to the disciple. Please help, please help. And the disciple ran to Christ like, look, man, send this woman away. She crying after us now. So he wasn't talking to uh, other people outside of the nation. Come on. Matthew fifteen and twenty four. But he answered and said. I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So he told her when 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 she came crying when she came crying to him, look, I'm not sent to y'all. I'm sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's it. So he when he fed something to her, he he told her, look, this is not for you. All right, come on. Matthew 15 and 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. Lord, help me, please. This woman threw herself at his feet and worshipped him, begging for help. Come on. Matthew 15 and 26. But he answered and said, It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. That's like me sitting at the table right now before I feed my family and we got a dog down on the floor. I take all the food first and give it to the dog. Christ, that's what he's saying. It ain't right for me to take the bread off the table for my children and give it to the dog on the floor. Let's see what she said. Wait a minute. Christ answered, it is not right to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. This is the same way the Father felt about the other nations. You think Christ shared, shared a different opinion? Let's get that because you know what? Christ only, he came after his Father. The same, the same things his Father said. Christ didn't say anything different. Let's get Exodus 20. I think it's Exodus 11 and 7. Exodus 11 and 7. I got to correct it. Exodus 11 and 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. The, the, the Most High God called, called uh, other nations uh, dogs too. So Christ didn't say nothing different. He, he, he's not going to, you know, okay, my father, he didn't feel that, you know, he, he made a mistake when he said that. No. Christ was saying the same thing. It ain't right for me to take the children's bread and give it to dogs. So, everybody gonna get mad at him for saying that. But, you know, I'm just saying, he said it. And that's what he meant. So, continue on. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. The other nation outside of the Israelites are dogs to the Most High God and Christ. All right, let's get let's get further proof. Isaiah forty and seventeen, all nations before him are as nothing. He said it more than once. This is the Most High said, all nations before the Most High are as what? 
are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing. What's less than nothing? Because zero is nothing. What is less than nothing? Negative. Negative. He said you less than nothing. Okay. And vanity. That's lies. So they they less than nothing in lies. So Christ ain't saying nothing different than what his father said. That's all I'm saying. And these are not my words. Continue on, Matthew 15 and 27. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. She understood her place in, 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 in she understood her place in the order. She said, yeah, Truth, Lord. But the dogs eat from, uh, from the crumbs that fall off the table. Off the master's table. Don't, don't, ain't that if you had a dog at the floor and y'all eating dinner and, and something fell on the floor and the dog ate it, would, would the dog would eat it, right? This is what she said. You know, these are just scriptures that everybody skip over because they don't want to offend anybody. I'm not, I'm, I'm saying what the Most High God says, so if you get offended, get mad with the Most High. Not me. These are not my words. I, this Bible was here way before I was born. All right, come on. Matthew fifteen twenty eight. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, A woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made a whole, whole from that very hour. So, so the Messiah felt, felt okay by giving her some crumbs that fell off the table. He's like, okay, here's a crumb. Do it on the floor to the dog and let the dog eat it. You know, so... He gave he gave her a blessing. Here's a parable of the Messiah that is filled with instructions. Let me let me show you this this, this parable because it's rife with instructions. But the fact is, the Messiah only spoke to parables for people that that have blinders on, that that have eyes but can't see, that have ears but can't hear. So he spoke parables to his people because. He told his disciples, you know, when his disciples asked him, why are you speaking parables to these people? He said, it's not, it's not for them to know. Because if they're not in this truth, the Most High God is not going to give his word to them. All right. Let me read Matthew 22 and 2. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a, is like unto a certain king, which made, a, which made a marriage for his son. The kingdom of heaven, according to Revelations 21 and 12, is the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, who are the only participants who would be invited to the marriage. Let's get that, uh, let's get that uh, uh, precept. Come on, Gordon. Okay. Jeremiah 3 and 11. And the Lord said to me, the backsliding Israel had justified herself. More than treacherous Judah. So both Judah, the north, the uh, Israel, the northern kingdom, and Judah, the southern kingdom, were being very treacherous to the Most High, disobeying His commandments. We're discussing the northern kingdom, Israel, and the southern kingdom, Judah, both the backsliding against the Most High God. All right, come on. Jeremiah three and twelve, go and proclaim these words towards the north, and say, "Return, thou backsliding Israel," saith the Lord. And I will not cause mine anger to fall upon you, for I am merciful, saith the Lord, and I will not keep anger forever. The Most High has given the Israel the location north. Israel, the northern kingdom, was in the northern hemisphere when when Christopher Columbus and the conquistadors came upon them. Had they repented, the Most High would have showed mercy. So. They didn't. They didn't repent. So the Most High God didn't show mercy. Uh, continue on. Jeremiah three and thirteen. Only acknowledge thine iniquity, that thou hast transgressed against the Lord thy God, and hast scattered thy way to the strangers under every green tree, and ye have not obeyed my voice, saith the Lord. Okay. If the if the northern kingdom only acknowledged their sins that they committed against their Elohim worshiping their other gods and have not kept the commandments of the Most High. 
you know, if they had acknowledged their, their sin, but they decided they didn't want to keep the commandments. So, um, continue on. Jeremiah 3 and 14. Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord. For I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. So, the Most High God is, is basically pleading with them to tell them to re repent and return to them to him. The people the people eligible for the wedding is Israel and Judah. The Most High would invite one to a city and two to a family, and would bring to the location of the wedding, which is in Zion. That's where the wedding is going to occur, in the kingdom. So, only people that are eligible to come to this to this wedding are the, are the two nations that backslid against him in the beginning, Judah and Israel. Dominic, pay attention, please. Uh, that those are the people that's going to be eligible to come to the uh, come to the wedding. Okay, continue. Let's continue in our lesson because those those are the people eligible for the wedding. So I'm giving y'all the participants who are eligible for this wedding that was spoken in in Matthew 2 and 20, uh, 22 and 2. All right, continue on. Matthew 22 and 3. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Who are the servants? I have a few precepts to use, but this one I, w I think is best. Dominic, read that. How be it? I we, we read that. Jeremiah 24. Look, read up. Speak Jeremiah up. Jeremiah 44 and 4. How be it? I say unto you, all my servants. All my what? All my servants. The prophets. The, okay, who the servants? The prophets. Okay, say it again. The prophets. Okay. Rising early and sending them say, oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. Okay, so, the Most High God was sending the prophets, who, who are his servants, to warn the people to not do all of the abominate, abominable things that they were doing which he hated. The servants of the prophets instructing you on the law, teaching you not to do the abominable, abominable things that the Most High God hates. Just as today, the Most High God is sending his servants, teaching the law, statutes and commandments to his people, but they would not come in. They are not coming into the wedding. All right, come on. Matthew 22 and 4. Again, he sent forth other, other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed. And all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Okay, so he prepared the marriage. Bidden. What bidden means? Bidding. When you bid somebody, you are when you when you when somebody you bid somebody to do something. You you command them to do it. That they are bidding, they're commanded. See, we we are the, the children of Israel are commanded to do everything that most I got because he made a covenant with us and his commandments are the things that we must do he commands us he bids us to do these things so tell them which are bidden tell the Israelites tell the twelve tribes which are, which are bidden are commanded I prepared my dinner my oxen so he's telling you I prepared the kingdom for you and all the all the things that that are, that are made to celebrate for celebrating come to the marriage come on first kings let's, let's you see this new thing again the most high is sending his prophets out again you see this new thing which is not new the most high God is waking his servants up the same as he did before let's get first kings 19 and 13 and it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of, in, of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? 
This is when Jezebel was killing all of the prophets of the Most High God. Elijah stood in the cave and the Most High asked, What are you doing here? Continue on. First Kings 19 to 14. He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. What do you think he was saying right there? I've been very jealous for the Lord of, the Lord of God of hosts. What, what do you think he was saying? I'm being very jealous for the Lord of God of hosts. Continue reading. Because the children of Israel have forsaken my thy covenant, thrown down thine altar, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. Elijah said he was jealous of the Lord of, of uh, jealous for the Lord of the people breaking his commandments. He was jealous because the people were breaking his commandments and you know he probably wanted to do something about it too, uh, himself. Elijah thought that he was the only prophet of the Most High Gods. Now this precept here is written for y'all to learn as well because the fact is don't think that the Most High God only sends you out. You are the only prophet of the Most High. You are the only camp that the Most High God is bidding or ordering to do stuff. Don't think ever think that because the Most High, it, like I said, you ain't great as Elijah, and, and and Elijah was made to be mistaken, just like all of y'all are. All right, C come on. First Kings nineteen and fourteen. Nineteen and what? 19 and 18. Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed at the bow, and every mouth which have, have not kissed. Him. How many he left? In, uh, the most I had left in, in, in Israel? 7,000. So, like I'm saying, the fact is, that's because you think you're the only prophet that's doing the most I God's work. He got way more prophets than he waking up every day. You know, just right now in, in, in Israel, this word is going out and people are just waking up. You know, before 20, 20, uh, whatever time, I, before I heard this word, people are waking up and waking up and waking up. Everybody's everywhere doing the will of the Most High God right now. So, don't y'all ever think, you know, don't y'all ever think, especially some of you can't, don't y'all ever think that y'all the only ones waking up. People are waking up. Most High God saying that he had 7,000 when Elijah was around, thought he was the only one around. Y'all ain't the only one around either. So, y'all need to get that out your brain, get it out your head, because that's just plain simplicity. Y'all just being simple Negroes. These are the lessons that this Bible teaches us. Don't think that your brand of righteousness is the only flavor. That's why a lot of you camps are thinking and this is why y'all going off. Because the fact is, your brand of righteousness is not the only flavor of righteousness that the Most High God has. And your brand, your camp is not the only camp that the Most High God woke up to do His will. Continue on. Matthew 22 and 5. But they made light of it and went their ways, went to his farm. Another to his merchandise. See, this is what we're doing today when we're trying to wake up the people to bid them to the marriage, to the kingdom. People making light of it. They got things to do. You know, this is the parable that the Messiah was saying. Oh, all these folks got a lot, got things to do. This is the same thing that people do. You go out there and you teach, you teach in the kingdom, telling people about the kingdom of, of heaven. Nobody want to hear that. They got way too many things to do. The people of the kingdom didn't listen to the prophets as they do not today. Elijah was jealous for the Most High of his people violating the Most High God's commandments and serving other gods. Let's continue on. Matthew 22 and 6. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. The Messiah is telling you what happened to the prophets. Who slew the prophets? Who killed the prophets? The people. What people? Who slew the prophets? 
Yeah, they were rebellious. We're going to get that proved. Because these are the things that y'all should know today. That y'all should learn today. Because the fact is, if y'all try to do anything positive, y'all try to do anything positive, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect you anyway. Let's get Matthew 23 and 29. We're going to start there. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Are you all just plain hypocrites. That's what Christ called them. Come on. Because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous. Okay. Now, this, this, you know, the Messiah is telling them, woe, destruction to you leaders. At the time, the scribes and the Pharisees during that day were the leaders of, of the Jews. Who would be the leaders of the Jews today? Every time some go down, they always call, uh, contact who? What leader are they going to contact uh, uh, among us? Uh, which leaders? Pastors. Oh yeah, all them preachers. Now, I'm not saying that, hey, this this is this is who the so-called white man always contact. When stuff go down and they're going to call Al and they're going to call Jesse, you know, they're going to call TD, they're going to call uh, Creflo and uh, a few other other people to come. Because like they, uh, when New Orleans happened, you know, TD and Creflo was there. They're going to they gonna call these people. So Christ was saying, y'all the ones... Christ was saying, y'all the one build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchers of the righteous. So those of the righteous, he, these are different people. You, you uh, build the tombs of the prophets because you don't kill them and put them in the, in, in the grave and you garnish the sepulchers of the righteous. You, the, the, the grave of the, those that was doing right work. So these people... You had something to do with their life, their, their, their murder, but you, you garnish them like you ain't have nothing to do with it. This is something for y'all to learn from, because you know what? The Most High God is telling you right here that y'all need to watch out for these devils. Come on, man, uh, uh, Christ knew about them then. These are things he wrote in his Bible to let y'all know. Y'all need to watch out for these type people. Come on, Matthew 23 and 30, come on. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers. Say what? If we had been in the days of our fathers, okay. we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophet. They claim that they would have not killed the prophets like their fathers did. Continue on. Matthew 23 and 31. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves, that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. However, they are saying men as their fathers, and they participate in killing the prophets. they they the same as their father, because you know what? These are the same men that came after Christ, trying to trick him, trying to kill him, you know, bringing out, bringing out Herods and stuff, uh, out there while Christ was speaking and asking them questions to try to, to get him in trouble, to get him, get him slain. You know, these are the same people that was trying to set him up, and if, if, if he didn't have so many people around him, they would have took him and killed him right away. But, they got 5,000 people. Christ had 5,000, 10, 20,000 people around him. So they was afraid to take him while he was teaching. It would have been like they would have, they would have killed him. They, they would have just basically killed themselves. Because them people would have, would, have, would have murdered all of them. So they couldn't take him like that. Alright, come on. Let's get a pretty self. However, they're the same men as their fathers, and they participated in killing the prophets. Let's get Matthew 22 and 7. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Okay, so this is a precept. When the Most High God saw that these leaders had done, they killed the Messiah. All of the disciples, Apostle Paul and, and the saints, the Most High destroyed the city. What city is he talking about? Look at Luke 21 and 20. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with army. What city did he destroy? See this, see, this is a parable, but Christ was telling you the same thing that he's saying right now in Luke. 
Yeah, he 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 said when he, when they found out what they were, had done, they killed the prophets. They went after Christ, killed him, but he, Christ had to die to save us. But then they went and killed all the disciples. All the disciples got murdered. They killed the apostles, Apostle Paul, and all of them. Christ didn't the most like destroyed the city. Okay, so let's see let's see what Christ prophesied about that city being destroyed. Read that again. And when ye shall see Where you at? Luke twenty one twenty. When ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies. And know that the desolation thereof is not. The Messiah told the Jews that Jerusalem would be destroyed. He spoke in a parable about it, and he also told them how to act when they see certain signs. When you see a lot of Roman soldiers coming, they know they're coming to destroy Jerusalem and the surrounding cities. They ain't coming for peace. So when them soldiers show up, make certain that you, you know what to do. All right, what you supposed to do? Come on. Luke 21, 21. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. You better run. Get out of get out of Dodge. Get in. Go go into the mountains. What mountains were we referring to? What mountains was he referring to? What did what what did the angel what did the angel tell uh, Joseph to to flee to when uh, when Christ was a baby? What did Christ flee to? Huh? Did he escape to Egypt? Yeah, they fled, fled to Egypt. So it's the mountain range between uh, it was the mountain range between Jerusalem and and, and, and uh, Egypt. Told them to flee into those mountains, get out of there, go in, go deeper into Africa. All right, come on. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and not them that are in the countries enter there in two. I, mean, I don't. I don't. Okay. All right. You see, you see those Romans flee to the mountains, which is the same place the angels told the Messiah, Messiah's parents to flee, Egypt. All right. Continue on. Luke twenty one twenty two. For these, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. The days of vengeance for breaking that, for breaking the covenant, including killing the prophets. Come on. Luke twenty one twenty three. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land, and wrath upon the people. So you know the thing about it is the most high is telling you right here, he he don't care if you got children. He ain't gonna have children you know, you you giving suck to your child. The, the most high God is not gonna care at all. See, when, and, and like I said, when that destruction happened, when this destruction coming again, because you know what? During the flood, did Christ, did, 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 did uh, only men die in the flood? No. Who, who died in the flood? Everybody except for those. You just think about the people that died. Old men, old women, infants, newborns. Women that got babies, everybody died. So don't think that you're so precious that your life is going to be worth a damn when you ain't doing what the Most High God tell you. He's telling you the same thing here. Woe unto you with children. They dying too. So when, the, when, when, this, when this stuff ends and you weak it, it's, it's I don't know what. If you got a child, you dying with it. The child dying with you. All right, but woe to them that that are with child. The Most High was killing women and children in his vengeance. The Most High is taking vengeance upon us now, especially the women and children are not saved. All right, continue. Luke twenty-one twenty-four. They shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles, so the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Well, the time of the Gentiles is trot is being trodden down of the Gentiles as we speak today. So, the time of the Gentiles are not fulfilled. You know, those people claiming that they are Jews, they're not the real Jews. They are trodden down. They, uh, Jerusalem is still being trodden down by the Gentiles. But these Edomites try to 
write themselves into our book, but they, you know, the Messiah just shut them down. That's why they don't believe in the New Testament because the Messiah told in Revelation 2 and 9, you know, I know thy works and tribulations, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them that say they are Jews and are not. And are the synagogue of Satan. So he shut them down. So those are not the real Jews. They are the Gentiles that's trodden up on down Jerusalem right now. Alright, let's continue. Matthew 22 and 8. And saith he to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. They were that they, they that were commanded were not were not worthy. So he's telling you at the end time, right here, he's speaking in regards to the end time. Said to his servants, the, the wedding is ready, the kingdom is ready. But they that were commanded, the, the Israelites who were commanded, were not ready. They were not worthy to come to the wedding. Why they weren't worthy? Because they were disobeying. They, they disobedient. So the Messiah was telling them, that, oh, y'all, they were disobedient. But I'm going to tell you, the people that he was speaking to were sitting there like, huh? What are you talking about? Because he was speaking in parables. Had they any understanding of this Bible, they would have known these precepts and been able to break them down. All right, continue on. Matthew 22, 9. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. Command them to come in. The servants of the Most High God are now in the streets and highways, commanding the Israelites to prepare themselves for, for marriage. Keep the commandments. That's what he's doing. Now, This precept says, Go therefore into the highways. Highways. Now, a lot of y'all try to be simple when, when, you, when you start talking about words. Does the internet have a highway? Is there internet highways? The internet is called a highway as a community. Most of y'all stay on your phone more than you stay outside. You know, the fact is, when I was a kid, we didn't have phones. Y'all communicating, y'all on highways communicating with people that we would, we would never communicate with. Because if we weren't at home, you ain't got the, you're not getting the message when I grew up. People call your house phone. So, you only talk to the friend, the people you was around every day. So when somebody wanted to come see you, they had to come over your house and come get you. The so stuff like that. They didn't get on their phone and talk to people on the internet. Internet has some highway too. So all you simple people thinking that you had to go out out there on the on the on the highways and hedges of the of the physical street. This present world got a highway, elect electronic highway. And like I'm saying, the people. You know that y'all, you know you, or well, y'all just Facebook prophets and y'all just, you know, YouTube prophets. Y'all need to get over that, because the fact is they, they are, they are, they're preaching on a the highway there, electronic highway, because they, you know what, they're catching more people passing by than you on the street corner. Trust me on that. They are. Y'all stop being simple, and like I said, and stop and stop criticizing another man's work. You know, the fact is, you you know, we supposed to be gathering together, but everybody's trying to be so divisive and, and and do all kind of wicked stuff. All right, come on. Matthew twenty-two and eleven. And when the king came to see the guest, he saw there a man. Wait a minute. Twenty-two and ten first. So servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good. And the wedding was furnished with guests. We were out in the streets on the digital highways, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. In the communities, everywhere our people are. And in the communities. Because our people are everywhere. You know, you know because nowadays they got these digital phones that they didn't have in the 70s. In the 80s, 
in the nineties. You know, I'm gonna tell you, you know, you you people stop being foolish, being led by these 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 crazy ass men that y'all got leading y'all. Stop being foolish. Because the fact is, there are highways everywhere. There are digital highways. You know, there are more people on the internet than they are walking the darn street most of the time. What is that? A highway. So he's telling everybody, both good and bad, they went and, they went and got all the people, good and bad. Dominic. All right, come on. Matthews 22 and it was it. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. A wedding garment is, a, is supposed to be royal garment. Let's identify what that is. All right. Read that. Numbers 15 and 38. What? Numbers 15 and 38. All right. Speak up to the children of Israel and bid them. That would have bid word again. What would I say bid mean? Call. Like come, like command. Command, yeah. Okay. Bid them, command them. It's a commandment. Come on. And bid them that they make their fringes in the borders of their garment throughout their generations. And they put them on the fringes of the border, a ribbon of blue. Okay. The royal garment of the wedding garment of the garment that the most high commanded us to wear from the beginning. When we were a nation and when we made a covenant with him. So y'all walking around without your garment on and, 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 and you're going to get to the wedding and you, you're going to get to the gate, to the kingdom, and you don't have your garment on? Let's see what Christ, Christ said. Matthew 22. See, these, these precepts, and a lot of y'all look over this stuff. And you, and you don't even understand what he's talking about. You ain't got a royal garment on. Why you ain't got your garment on? And you call yourself an Israelite? All right, let's put it. All right, no, come on. Numbers fifteen and thirty-nine. That sh and it shall be unto you for a fringe that ye look upon it. When the ye wait, come on. And ye may look upon it, and remember all the commands of the Lord, and do them, that they see that that ye seek not after their own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go whoring. The wedding garment would be a fringe garment. This goes to you Israelites that don't want to wear fringes. How can you come to a wedding pertaining to you, but you are dressed as an outsider? You come into a wedding that pertains to you, to pertain to the things that the Most High God told you to do, but you coming in dressed like how the Edomite told you to dress. You know, put your skinny jeans on and put this tight shirt on and tuck it in and all this other stuff and you come into the Israelite party I tell you in that day we I'm going to show you what the, what the Messiah say he, what he going to do to you who are you committed to if the king says wear fringes then we must wear them alright continue on Matthew 22 and 12 and he said unto him friend how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. This precept should inform you on how important wearing a fringe garment to the Most High God and the Messiah is. When the Messiah returns, you think you will be off the hook for not wearing fringes? All right, come on, Matthew 22 and 13. Then to the king, to the servant. No, no, look, slow down and read. And stop slurring your words. Come on. Then said the king to the servants, Bind him. Do and, what? Bind him hand and foot. Bind him hand and foot. Okay, come on. And take him away. And cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Throw him into hell. Where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Bind him hand and foot. And cast him into outer darkness. He gonna throw your ass in the, in in the hell. So I'm telling you, fringes are important. You come into the wedding and you don't even have your royal garments on. The royal garments that the Most High God told you to wear in the beginning. You coming and dressing like the Edomites because you you 
you, you that is your God. And you speechless when the Messiah, when they come to you, where is your royal garment? And, uh, uh, oh, it's the fringe is in my heart. Huh. Okay. You know, when, <laughs> when the Messiah said, when the Messiah come and bind you hand and foot, <laughs> yet them binds is in my heart, on your body, and I'm going to throw your ass into this, this darkness. Wailing and gnashing of teeth is I'm telling y'all, y'all need to stop being simple. And these precepts are for your learning. If you if you are if you are studying the law, then you should understand what these precepts mean. If you are keeping the Most High God's commandments, He give this gift to you and give you it abundantly. The understanding of of His Word, He ain't gonna leave you hanging, no, not leave you short. Of understanding, but to those that 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 are uh, are faking it, only wearing their fringes and and all that other stuff like the Jews were doing in Jerusalem, you lacking understanding. I can see a lot of y'all like that. Doesn't look like you'll be forgiven. These laws, statutes, commandments are the way ways that the Most High God commands us to walk. That's how we worship the Most High God in spirit. Let's get Second John one and six. And this is love that we walk after His commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. If we want to get the kingdom, then this is how we should walk. With all of this said, I'm going to go over some material which I consider part of the milk, but it's it's got some uh it, it has a, a a lot of meat in it too. So this this material is not only milk it's 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 got some it's got some meat you know so it may be a few it might be a few steps up uh many israelites in this truth are still lost let me share some of this milk with you Many learned Israelites believe that Genesis is a very difficult book. The Most High God created the first Adam, his son. The Most High created more than one man, and he did not create all of them in his image. So, in order to get on the right foot of this word, you got to understand Genesis a little bit better. Because when the Most High God created Adam, he just didn't create one Adam, and when he created Adam, he only created one in his image. Let's get the wording on, on this. Genesis 1 and 20, 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Slow down. So we're talking about man. Is man single or plural? One. It's man one. Man is single, right? Yeah. So he created man in his own image. So we're talking about one man. In the image of God created he, him. Him, singular, plural. Plural. What? Singular, sorry. Created him. Because if, if, if it was plural, it would be dim. He created dim if it was plural. But he said he created him. So he's talking about that same man. In the image of God created he. He is single. Him, he created him. Okay, come on. Then it's got a, it's got a separator. It's got a semicolon. That's a separator. It's talking about another a point. Now, come on. Male and female created he them. Now, he created them too. Male and female, he created them. He didn't create. It doesn't say he put he created them in his image. He created male and female. So they may look like him. But he didn't give them the essence that he gave the first man. All the things that, all the properties and the power that he, he gave to the first Adam. Okay, the above breakdown, the Most High God created one man in his own image, him. Then he created male and female, them. Did the scripture say the Most High God created them in his image? That first man is the son of God created in his image. 
The scriptures bear witness of this. The Messiah's lineage goes back to Adam. So, the most like the, the Messiah's lineage goes back to Adam. You know, he's in and out. Of, he, he comes in the volume of the book. So he's inside of the inside when he's in and he's out because he was there before Adam was created. But his lineage goes back also to Adam. Wow. That's hard to hard to fathom, but you know what? That's 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 the Messiah for you because he he jumped in and out. He was there when the world was created. Before Adam was, he was. All right, let's get that proof that the Messiah of lineage came from the, from Adam. Luke three and twenty three. And Jesus himself began to be about. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being, as we suppose, the son of Joseph, which was a son of Heli? Heli, yep. Yeah. Okay, he was the son of Joseph, which was a son of Heli. So, we're, we're getting into his uh, genealogy. We're not going to go through all of his genealogy. We're going to jump down, but if you want to read it, just start at Matthew uh, 3. And 23, and you can read down to 3 and 38, which will take you the full length of his genealogy. But we're going to drop, we're going to jump up to a minute. Come on. Which was the son of? Look, with, don't. Oh, uh, look at 3 and 24. Which was the son of? Mahat? Matat. Matat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi. Melchi. Melchi? Yeah. Which was the son of Jana, which was the son of Joseph, which was, uh, Luke 3 and 36. Which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of, I'm glad I'm going to try it. Arphaxad. Arphaxad, which was the son of Sim. Shem. Shem, which was the son of Noah, which was the son of Lamech. 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 I skipped some of the generational names to get to the meat of the story. Come on. Luke 3 and 37. Which one is the son of Methuselah? Methuselah. Which was the son of Enoch? Which one is the son of Jerry? Which one is the son of Malelio? Malelio. Which one is the son of Canaan? Luke three and thirty-eight. Which one is the son of Enos? Which was the son of Seth? Which was the son of Adam? Which was the son of God? Okay. So Adam, that first Adam was the son of God. He didn't say all of the Adams. Because most like God created more than one man. Proof is that when 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 uh when Cain slew Abel and they and and, and they, they kicked him out of the uh you know they kicked him out of the land he went and married somebody else so how could he marry somebody else if there were no other people on the land in the land those were other Adams and their kids the Messiah is the son of the Most High God as the Israelites are did the apostles or disciples teach that the Israelites are sons of the Most High God? Of course they did. Let's get because they knew, they knew the story that I'm telling you. We just don't know it. You know, they knew that we were the sons of God, and they were telling the story. But now today we don't tell that story because we don't forget. And I'll get to that in a minute. Galatians four and four. But when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth His Son, made of a woman, made under the law. The Most High God sent Christ of the seed of David, made of a woman. Christ did not take the disposition of angels. So, let's get that precept. Hebrews 2 and 16. He didn't come as an angel because, you know, just imagine if He came as an angel, having no understanding how people live, how people sin, how weak their flesh is. All of these things that he had to experience in order to be a good high priest. All right, let's get that precept. Hebrews two and sixteen. For verily he took not of him the natures of angels, but he took of him the seed of Abraham. Christ chose not to take on the disposition of angels, but he came through the seed of Abraham, through the lineage of King David. Let's get Romans one and three. Come on. Concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which is made of the seed of David according to the flesh. Alright, he was made of the seed of David, which was of the seed of Abraham. 
according to the flesh. So it was no, you know, he was born, you know, without having sex because he has actually had sex, you know, Mary actually had sex with Joseph, you know, and Christ was was born. All right, let's continue on Hebrews two and seventeen. Wherefore in all things it behoved him to be made like unto his brethren. Unto his what? Unto his brethren. His brethren. Okay, so Christ is saying we're his brethren. All right, come on. That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make re reconcile. Reconciliation. Reconciliation for the sins of the people. The Messiah chose to be like his brothers, the Israelites, so that he could understand the things we go through in order to be a merciful and faithful high priest. Because if he came as an angel, he wouldn't have been, there would be no mercy. There would be no mercy because the angels is black and white for them. You see in death. You know, it, it ain't no such thing as you no know, gray ground and, and and things that you go through. They don't know because they don't they don't have a, 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 a ability to to sin. All right, angels don't go through temptation. They will be least likely to show mercy and understand your sins. All right, continue with Galatians four and five. To redeem, to redeem them that were under the law. See, Christ came to redeem them that were under the law. Who was under the law? The Israelites. The Israelites were under the law. Come on. That we might receive the adoptions of sons. Adoption of what? Sons. Okay. We were already the sons, according to Luke three, twenty-three to Luke to uh, Luke three thirty-eight. We were already his sons, but the fact is, the Most High God had wrote us wrote us all off when He stopped taking uh. Sacrifices from the, from the Levite priest. There was no more. There was no more uh, Judah because the most, the most High God didn't want. He, he didn't accept no no uh, no forgiveness for, for Judah. He had already ridden off the Northern Kingdom, so he had to adopt us back as his as his children. We still are his children. The Messiah came to save or redeem those people who were under the law, so we can be adopted back as the sons of God. Were we sons before? Let's get that, let's get that proof. Psalms 82 and 6, I have said, ye are God, and all of you are children of the Most High. We are gods in Psalms, during the time of King David. We were gods. The answer is yes, we are the children of the Most High, because we forsake His covenant the Most High God disowned, disowned us. In contrast to what many of you Israelites believe that the Most High only abandoned the Northern Kingdom, that's not true. He abandoned Judah also. This is why the Messiah came. In Malachi 1, chapter 1, verses 6 through 10, when the Levites were not keeping up the temple, sacrificing animals with cysts, scurvy, blind, lame, etc., the men of, in Judah saw this and nobody stood up for the Most High. He asked them this question. Let's, let's get what he said. Malachi 1 and 10. Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for not? Which one of you Which one of you in Judah would come and see these Levites doing all of this and filthy stuff that they're doing and sacrificing all these unclean animals even though they were of the, of the animals that to sacrifice but the Most High God specifically said do not sacrifice broke up animals animals with, with, with with issues with scurvy and blind and lame. He told them not to sacrifice that kind of stuff, but they were doing it anyway. And none of the men in Judah came to, to close the doors for that. Come on. Okay. Neither do you kindle fire on my altar for not. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. So, he fired the Levites. If he did not accept offerings for the children for the children of Judah for for the southern kingdom, if he was not accepting any offering from the Levites, then he did away with the whole uh, southern kingdom too. So he did away with us all right there. Not one soul in Jerusalem stood up to the Most High God. Stood up for the Most High God. 
when the Most High God stopped accepting sacrifices from the Levite's hand, what was what was the net effect? If the Most High was rejecting the offerings of the Levites, who was the mediator? Who was the mediator? If he was rejecting the offerings from the Levi from the Levites, because you know what, the Levites were the mediator of the old covenant. So if he rejected the mediator to talk to to come to God on behalf of the children of Israel, then he rejected the children. As the Messiah is the mediator of the new covenant, this was the fault that the Most High God in, found in Israel. Look at Hebrews 8 and 8. For if they fought with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, and with the house of Judah. The Most High reestablished a connection to his children because the fact is he had cut that connection from us so he reestablished that connection he made he made, made a new covenant with Judah the southern kingdom and Israel the northern kingdom because he had he had threw all, both of us away all right continue on he related not and according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day but I took them by hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not. What is he regard? What is he re talking about right there? He's not talking about the covenant that I made with the fathers. Yeah, what, what was that covenant? Um, yeah, sacrifices. So, from the from this precept, you understand that there was a different covenant that the Most High made with Judah and Israel. He didn't include the world that most of you so-called Christian think. When you quote John 3 and 16. Let's get Galatians. Cause let's continue with Galatians 4 and 6. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts. Cry, Abba, Father. Because the Israelites' son reconciled back to the Father when the Most High sent, when the, Most High sent the Messiah. Come on. Galatians 4 and 7. Wherefore thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. The Israelites are no more servants, but a son, an heir, or a descendant of the Most High God, through being adopted back to the fold by the Messiah. Yahweh had Jesus the Christ. In the beginning, after the flood, all mankind was the color of the earth. Let's get Genesis 2 and 7 to prove that. Um, um, these are different, this, this is another thought, because um, these are all things to understand how you must walk and how, what you must understand. This, these are the things that can take your take the blinders off your eyes to be able to see, to have eyes and to see and have ears and to hear. But a lot of y'all are not, not going to understand this. That's why Christ spoke in parables a lot because it wasn't for you to understand because you were just wicked as hell. I, I'm going to try to leave this here, but I know a lot of y'all going to reject it, and it probably would just be best for me to speak in parables, but. Me being me and me speaking plainly is going to uh, upset a lot of y'all because the fact is, you know, you got you got eyes and can't see and got ears and can't hear. All right, get Genesis. Let's 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 show you that everybody was the same color. They were the color of the earth in the beginning. Genesis two and seven. Read that. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So, he formed man of the dust of the ground. Is there any, is there any light pink dust? Any, any pink dust of the, of, of, of the ground? Anybody ever seen some pink dust? Some pink dirt? Some, some light pink dirt? There's no such thing. Most like God formed man of the dust of the ground. 
So, the dust of the ground I have never seen a so-called pink shade of dirt. It has always been from light brown to dark brown shade. Esau has came re regenerated. I'm not going deep into this, but I will provide a couple of precepts because you must understand that Esau and Cain same people they just regenerated back let's get Ecclesiastes we're going to, uh, we're going to start our, our, our concept uh, our conversation at Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 is there any thing oh, right? 1, and, 1 and 9 the thing that has been it is that which shall be and that which is done is that which shall be done and there is no new thing under the sun the man that has been is that which shall be and the event which is done is the same that shall be done there is nothing new under the sun continue on Ecclesiastes 1 and 10 is there anything thereof it may be said see this is new it has been said it has been already of old time which was before us the most high is telling you that you can't point at anything and say that is new it has already been here before. Continue on. Ecclesiastes 1 and 11. There is no remembrance of former things. Neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after. The Bible shows an example of regeneration. Let's, let's get a few examples. Let's get Matthew 17 and 12. But I say unto you that Elias is already come. They knew him not but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. This is Elijah the prophet that was prophesied to return. Let's get that, that, that prophecy. Malachi 4 and 5 Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Okay, so he was prophesied about Elijah would come before a great and dreadful day. All right, let's get Matthew 17 and 13 to finish that off. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. John the Baptist was Elijah the prophet re regenerated back upon the earth. Just as Cain is regenerated back as Esau. And the sons of the Most High God are the Israelites. Another example of regeneration. John 9 and 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. The Messiah was with his disciples and they passed by man born blind from birth. Come on. John 9 and 2. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? Who sinned? Okay. This man or his parents that he was born blind. Okay. Now, if anybody didn't catch that, then I'm going to tell you, you, you are really, you are really passed gone. Who sinned? Now, this man was born blind. They asked him, did he sin to be born blind when he was born blind? from birth which means that he was not given a chance to sin in this life so what is the disciples saying now somebody born blind they ask him master who did sin this man or his parents now this man being born blind from birth he wasn't given the opportunity to sin in this life if he was already born blind So, the disciples asked the Messiah who sinned, this man who was born blind or his parents. The man did not have an opportunity to sin if he was already blind at birth. The disciples were referring to his previous life. They understood regeneration. Notice the Messiah did not tell his disciples they were in error, thinking of such nonsense. The Messiah didn't tell him, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all in error with that. Let's see what the Messiah said. Come on. John 9 and 3. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. The proof is in the Messiah's response. Being their teacher, the Messiah would have corrected them if they were wrong. You're not going to remember your former self, but you were here before. Oh, okay. The thing about it is, 
if if this man was born blind, what that what indication is that tell you about his former life? He would he um he he saved his life. Yeah, because if you if you were wicked in your former life, you're not going to just come here perfect the next time. If you was past wicked in your former life, a murderer or, or, or something like that, yeah, the most high God, when he, when you, see, when he send you back, you're gonna have some deformities. You know, so, when y'all look at these people that, that can't walk and be doing all this little crazy stuff, they were some wicked suckers in their lab, their previous life. And when they came back, the most high God afflicted them. And, okay, go ahead. Oh, I said Esau is Cain. You see, Cain was not born so-called white. Cain, when Cain was born, he wasn't born white. He was born as the dust of the earth. But his pigmentation was removed from him. Let me give you that event. After Cain killed his brother Abel, his punish, punishment was this. All right, read Genesis 4 and 11. Start there. And now art thou cursed from the earth. Cursed from where? The earth. Okay. Which have opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. Being cursed from the earth entails that the color of the dust of the ground, the color of the earth, was removed from Cain's body. The Most High God cursed the descendants of Cain by removing the color of the earth from them. Not only did not only this come on. Let's get let's get the other part of the curse. Genesis four and twelve. When thou tillest the ground, it shall not henceforth yield unto thee her strength. That's why they put all these pesticides and all of these uh, genetically uh, re-engineered foods and all this stuff. The, 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 uh, the white man don't get the maximum yield of the, of the, of the uh, soil. Come on. And what else? Genesis 4 and 12. No, 4 and 12. Okay. Come on. Continue that. A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. A what? A fugitive and a vagabond shalt thou be in the earth. Cain would be a fugitive? That's a criminal that has never been brought to justice. Y'all see the closest resemblance because Esau ain't never been brought to justice either. So th this curse is still in effect. These are curses of the white man because they've been around ever since Cain slew his brother Abel. And they haven't, they haven't came off of him. Just like we are being cursed with our disobedience. But, but see, Esau is a cursed being already, even before we were. We were cursed. We are cursed because, all reason we are cursed because of our disobedience. But he's cursed. Just, just being a murderer. So, when the Most High God cursed him from the earth and made him a fugitive and a vagabond, he's never been brought to justice and a vagabond because he lives in everybody's land. Claiming, claiming it as his own. You know, calling the, the, the people that were original to uh, this land in America, calling them aliens. And telling them to go back to Mexico and all this old crazy stuff. Let's evaluate the blessing that Isaac bestowed upon Esau. Pay close attention to what Isaac told Esau. Come on. Genesis 27 and 38. Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Esau is begging his father Isaac to bless him after Jacob took the blessings. Listen to what his father blessed him with. Alright, come on. Genesis 27 and 39. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. And of the dew of heaven from above. So you're gonna have your dwelling is gonna be the best part of the earth. Wherever you live, it's gonna be abundant rain in the in, in the seasons. It's gonna be beautiful in parts of the year. So everywhere you live, you're gonna the dew. You're gonna have the fatness of the earth, best parts of the earth, and it's gonna be a it's gonna be a a, a, a bountiful rain. Come on. Genesis 27 and 40 And by thy sword shall thou live That's how you're going to get those fat, the fatness of the earth You're going to live by the sword 
Come on. You shall serve thy brother. You go, okay, so that to, that tell you that just as Rebecca got from the Most High, you know, the first the first shall ser serve the uh, the younger, the elder shall serve the younger. So Esau served us during the, the era of time of King David and stuff. Come on, come on, and shall come to pass. Thou shalt have the dominion. Okay, so they got dominion in, uh, when uh, Alexander the Greek came. They got dominion and, and took over the whole earth. Come on. Thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So they broke the yoke off our neck, off their neck. We, they broke our yoke off of their neck. So you were murder to get the best, best lands. You would serve Jacob for a season. Afterwards, you would break the, the yoke off your neck and you shall have dominion and you will live by the sword. This is what Esau is doing right now. Living by the sword. He's a fugitive and a vagabond. He's never been brought to justice and he's in everybody's land. A vagabond. That's what vagabonds do. They ain't got no homeland. And every land that they call, uh, call themselves, claim as theirs is not really theirs. Because when they, when they came out of Greece, they weren't Greek. The, 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 the original Grecians Because the fact is, uh, Esau is, is claiming to be Japheth, but they're not Japheth. They are Edomites. They are the, the, the twin, twin brother of Jacob. That's who they are. They took the land from Japheth when they came and claimed themselves Grecians. The dust of the ground, I have never seen so... Okay, I'm, I'm uh, on the wrong page now. All right, let me turn this. All the killings that Esau has done has continued doing in all the lands has he ever been brought to justice. A fugitive and a vagabond shall there, thou live. Even after Cain was regenerated back, he is the same person. To sum it all up, because Esau was, has whited most cultures on this earth, these people don't realize that their original color was like the dust of the ground. They are proud of their raped out complexion, including many of you Israelites, especially you Hispanics, so-called Hispanic people. Before the so-called white men showed up in your lands in 1492, you were a copper-colored people. The Negroes of Judah, many of you are whited out in the mines. You have white Jesus on the brain. You are a lion crouching who has lost his roar. When will you stop being foolish? Let's get Jeremiah 4.22. For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. Why have you so-called black Hispanic Native Americans, those of the diaspora dispersed throughout all of the lands, a part of the sub-Saharan and transatlantic slave trade. Why have you forgotten these things? Let's get Second Thessalonians. We're going we're gonna to show you that. Two and three. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. As the Messiah warned us. Let's get Matthew 24 and 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Okay, continue on. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, shall deceive many. Apostle Paul was also warning about the deception of man. Apostle Paul told us that they would not come until there be a falling away will happen first, and the son of destruction or damnation is revealed. We know that son of perdition is Esau. He is revealed. And the Israelites have fallen away. What have we fallen away from? Malachi 2 and 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. They should seek the law in his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of hosts. We have fallen away from re re receiving the laws of the Most High God. Because we have fallen away. Let's get Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, saying thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. I will also forget thy children. Israel 
has fallen away from the laws of the Most High and understanding of the Most High. Let's continue Second Thessalonians 2 and 4. Who opposeth and exalted himself above all that is called God and has worshipped, so that God sitteth in the no, wait, man, read that again. So that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Okay. The Israelites did I, did I just, the Israelites have fallen away from the understanding of God, the son of destruction, which is Esau, who destroyed our nation, is revealed. This enemy of the Most High opposes the Most High God's laws. Here are two examples. Let's, let's give a couple examples that they oppose. Us. Come on. Leviticus 18 and 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind and with womankind. It is abomination. Who exalts and opposes opposes God? Oh, it's all right to be gay and you know you can get married and you can do all this stuff. All right, come on. Deuteronomy twenty two and five: The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put it on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Who exalts? Who exalts and opposes opposes God? Let's get another one. Leviticus eleven and seven. And the swine, though he divide the hoof. And be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not to cut, he is unclean to you. The swine or the pig is an unclean animal. So to to you Israelites, it is it is not an animal for Israelites to eat, because Musa Akai declared us not to eat that, told us not to eat it. It's true the Most High God created the pig shrimp, lobster, crab, vultures, etc. to clean up the earth of dead animals and feces they are not created to be eaten you know cause these, these, these animals eat all kinds of stuff you know they eat the feces of other animals, they eat probably their own feces, eat their own babies eat anything that's dead, they'll eat it that, that's all the animals that we eat, the, the shrimp, crab, lobster all of that, they're, they're bottom feeders, they eat all of the, the garbage at the bottom of the ocean that's what they're that's what they were created for. They're good for that purpose, not for consumption. Alright, continue on. Leviticus eleven and eight. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. The most I tell you not to eat the pig, he did not change his mind. Here's why many of you don't know. Romans seven and one. Know ye not, brethren. For I speak to them that know the law. Speak to them that do what? That know the law. What is he saying? Huh? What is what is the Apostle Paul saying right here? I speak to them that know the law. Let me ask you this question. Now, I'm a doctor. When I'm speaking to other doctors and I'm using all these giant words and all these things that they only understand can a can a, a normal person be be in the conversation and be in understand, in understand what I'm saying huh no. Jordan would, would, would you no would you have under, would you have any idea what the hell I'm talking about no. I'm using giant words I'm using stuff that you ain't never heard and you just standing there listening and you were trying to say, what the hell are they talking about? Man, I ain't heard nothing I can re identify with. Because they just been going with just rambling off the, at the mouth and, you know, saying words that I don't even know what they're talking about. I, I, I'll need somebody to pause the conversation so I can look up all them words to even be in the picture. This is what Apostle Paul was. He was, he's a, he was a doctor of the law and he only, he, he taught the, the people that knew the law. So, if you are an unlearned person trying to get involved in this conversation, will you understand what Apostle Paul was talking about? No. What the hell y'all reading his letters for? This is what I'm trying to say. Paul spoke to people that knew the law. Why are y'all trying to read his letters? If you don't know the law, don't read his letters because it's going to confuse you, confound you like it has done. And that's why Esau has put y'all in Paul's letters knowing that y'all not going to understand a damn thing and confuse and, and just put damnation, cast damnation upon yourself. Get in the law first because Paul is telling you, I speak to those that know the law. So he, ain't, he, ain't, he is not talking a simple language. 
to you to you people that that don't know the law. All right, come on, continue on with that. Read the start of Romans seventy one over again. Now you not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. I speak, I speak to the educated ones. Come on. How that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. When you prepare yourself to study the doctrine of pa Apostle Paul, you must first know the Torah and the prophets. Apostle Paul was raised in the law. He spoke to Jews who knew the law. However, many of you so-called Christians and other, others handled his writings with little understanding. You did not take a, Apostle Peter's warnings about Apostle Paul's writings. Let's get Apostle Peter's warnings. Second Peter 3 and 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Okay. He was telling you the wisdom that the Most High God gave unto Apostle Paul that he wrote unto you. Y'all ain't going to understand a word of that. You know, but I'm going to tell you anyway. As Apostle Paul spoke, as Apostle Peter spoke according to regarding the wisdom of Apostle Paul given unto him and the word and, and he wrote in his letters let me yeah, I got a lot of them given unto him and he wrote in his letters so the wisdom that Apostle Paul had written he wrote that wisdom down and, and wrote them in letters alright continue on 2 Peter 3 and 16 as also in all his epistles. All his what? All his epistles. What are epistles? Like no Letters. Come on. Speaking in them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood. But they be hard to what? Hard to be understood. He's telling y'all. Apostle Paul speaking things that is hard for you to understand. You know, y'all ain't taking this warning. All right, come on. Which they that are unlearned and okay. unstable. Okay, you unlearned trying to read his documents and unstable. You unstable already because you don't know the law. Come on, rest. You wrestle with this stuff as they do also the other scriptures. Yeah, because when it says thou should, you know, Le Leviticus eleven and seven and the swine, don't be cloven footed, and and, and what if they and departed the hood, yet he chewed the cud. He is unclean to you. Y'all wrestle with that. Because most of y'all read that. Oh, those who pray over it is good. See, y'all reading into Apostle Paul's stuff. And that wasn't what he was talking about. Because everything of God is good. It's not for consumption. Just because something is good don't mean it's good to eat. Because most like God gave you the things that he wanted you to eat. He ain't reneging on his word. What y'all think y'all got a lying tongue God? that tell you one thing one minute and then, then you're like, no, I ain't say that. That ain't what I said. And he got it written down there. Oh, you know, our Elohim is not like you you, you are lying Negroes that walk around and the white man catch you in all your stuff. Oh, you mean tell me you didn't say that? And they got recordings and, and writings and stuff you wrote and said. No, most like God don't do don't work that way. Y'all just like I said, y'all don't understand what Apostle Paul said. Oh, you just pray over it. He wasn't talking about food. Everything the most like God made is good, but it's not good to eat because He gave you specific things that He wanted you to eat. Just go back and read Leviticus 11. Those are His laws. He didn't change His mind. All right, come on. Okay. Unto their own destruction. Start over. As also in all Look, His epistles. Where you at? Second Peter 3 and 16. As also in all His epistles. You're talking about the Apostle Paul's letters, come on. Speaking in them of these things, which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, and they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. To their own what? Own destruction. In Apostle Paul's letters, uh, epistles, he speaks of things that some are hard to understand. If you are unlearned and unstable, you will wrestle with Apostle Paul's letters or epistles. As you do with other scriptures, you first must understand this is about Apostle Paul. Okay, let's, let's first understand this about Apostle Paul. Acts 26 and 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. Okay, so he said what? 
said, said other things, saying none other things than what? Than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. So, he didn't say nothing different than what Moses and the prophets said. Apostle Paul said the same thing the prophets and Moses said. This proves that we have fallen away because we, the Israelites, don't know the law. Or taking letters that are written for Jews who know the law. Before you can understand Apostle Paul's writings, you got to relearn the law. You got to relearn the law. Or, or learn the law. Because trying to read a doctor's writing when you are unlearned just makes you stupid. It just makes you stupid. Because I don't see none of you so called Christians who don't know who don't understand the law and you reject everything in, 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 in the Old Testament. I don't see none of y'all going to a doctor's office and speak doctor's terms with the doctor. And most of the time when the doctor's talking to you, you you'll be sitting there like, I don't even understand what you're saying. Can you say that in layman's term? And you and you don't come to that conclusion and accept the fact that you are layman when you're talking when you're reading Apostle Paul's epistles. And these are the things that y'all get stuck in and, and, and be stuck on stupid. No, I'm saying you got to know the law in order to speak about Apostle Paul. And, and Apostle Peter just warned you about it and y'all just sit there like that was a road bump. That was a little bump in the road. Anyway, understanding how the Israelites must walk. We conclude this message. Uh, hope you guys got some out of it because you know I, I did cover a lot of different segments on this one. You know some of the things I, I probably shared on Facebook or, or something like that prior to this prior to this week. But you know I thought they was good enough messages to 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 sh share with with others, and I did because you know what. You know, some messages are, are, are good for a lot of things. Um, and, you know, I, I expounded on it a, a little bit more because the fact is, you know, in, in my writings, most of the time I write a, I write a few words and, and I look at it again, you know, I had five or six pages on it. That's just how I do it. You know, when, when the Spirit hit me, I, you know, I go, I go off. You know, I'm like that old... They call it the old, uh, old Southern Baptist preacher. He just keep writing and keep going, you know. But, but anyway, hope you guys got some out of this message. Uh, my, uh, let me give y'all my Facebook page. I like to give thanks to my sixteen thousand, almost six hundred Facebook followers. And YouTube, and also my YouTube subscribers. Uh, I really don't do much on YouTube anymore because you know they said that my 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 uh, message was not suitable for all users. So and you know, and you know they write it's not so, but I still upload my uh, lessons on on YouTube. I still got six, I still got subscribers. So all praise is most high, and people are still. You know, listening to my messages, cause I got like a hundred and seventy, hundred seventy-five, maybe hundred eighty messages, uh, classes on on, on uh, YouTube, and I'm still growing. Uh, my Facebook page is the at sign live l i v e Shabbat s h a b b a t class c l a s s all one word. My YouTube page is live, L-I-V-E, Shabbat, S-H-A-B-B-A-T, class, C-L-A-S-S, -S, all one word there. Um, feel free to like, subscribe, join, or whatever, leave, leave a comment. If it's regarding the word and the scriptures, you know, if, you know, the fact is, I speak scriptures. So, I don't want you guys to get on my page. Give me a, a Christianity doctrine speaking from your own mind and your opinions. I don't do that. It, it, and, and the truth, the most I God tells us to use His words. You know, 
Go to the people that use my words. Don't use your own opinion because it doesn't matter much to the Most High. So if you got something to say and you think that I'm in error anyway, I'm like to say, you know what? If you could correct me and say, you know what, you're in error, my brother. Uh, here's this and here's that. And I, and I see that and I see the precept match up. I'll feel free to. I'll be glad to listen. But if you are, if you if you throw in, if you throw in a scriptures together that that are not really preceptual, I ain't got time for you. I, I will I will come back and I will come back with my precepts, you know. But I'm not gonna go back and forth with you. Sorry, I don't do that. You know. Uh, but anyway, um, if you're not my people, and I always say who the, who who my audience is. So-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans, those of the diaspora, which means dispersed throughout all of the lands that the Most High God sent us through the sub-Saharan of the other Arabs who sold us everywhere, and the transatlantic slave trade. You know, when the, when the white man came to uh, to. To, to the west coast of Africa and South Africa and all the places that we were and bought us and also when they in 1492 when they came when Christopher Columbus and his cohorts came on the on the this side of the world North America and they they forced the the, the 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 people of that land which were Israelites the northern kingdom that came over here back in seven well let's say five five 560 or 540 BCE after the uh, Assyrian captivity a lot of them got on ships and came here so yeah we all went in slavery together we're all the same people we all have tragedies that this devil has done to us unspeakable things that they've done to our, our forefathers and, 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 it, and it burns me up to see the children of those people joining hand in hand with them and hating their own brothers and sisters. Shaking other head. Anyway. That family and friends, if you got somebody this message message and uh join me next Sabbath I have another one. With that, I like to say Shalom. Shalom.